and fighting a blue jay up there. Oh, I didn't even notice you there. I'm Hunter, and this is the Cactus Quest channel. Welcome back to my show. Today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you kind of a little update of how my cactus seedlings are going from last year and what changes I've made to my process. So this is gonna be a how-to video, and I'll nerd out and talk about some of my plants and stuff like that as well. Thank you so much for being here. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's hop into it. So right here, what we have is a uh, Parodia bunungii. I grew these, these are about a year old. And last year, when I grew my cactus, I grew them in these little dessert containers, little deli cups. And you can kind of see over here, I've had some successes and some failures with them. So really, this year, I'm moving to, let me get this trash out of there, but I'm moving to a different type of pot. The issues that I had with these were basically, it's a very, very lightweight plastic. So the problem is, is that <clears throat> you can see here, there's an Areocarpus retusus in there. But when these get exposed to any kind of UV radiation, what ends up happening is they start to warp and dilapidate and the plants really get cooked in there. So I'm gonna be switching over to doing something a little bit more like this. So a traditional nursery pot, still in the plastic bag, bag method, and I'll be explaining the differences and how I'm approaching the soil this year. Okay, so this is what you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna need some seeds, and these seeds were provided by Mesa Garden, a friend of mine who has a nursery locally, and some of my own plants, as a matter of fact. So um, you're gonna need some plant labels, and I highly recommend using a pencil, not a Sharpie, because these are gonna be sitting in a super humid environment for a year or two, and if you use a Sharpie, you won't know what it is by the time uh, that goes by. You're gonna need some two-inch pots, you're gonna need some cactus soil, and this is my regular cactus soil mix, which is a cactus soil store-bought, and I add in pumice. You will need some sandwich bags. Uh, these are some cheap ones I got at the 99 cent store, along with some hydrogen peroxide. This is what I'm soaking the soil in. Some rubbing alcohol to prepare and clean your workspace. Some gloves so that you don't burn your fingers with the hydrogen peroxide. And then the final touch is gonna be this fungicide, which is called Fizan 20. I'm gonna use that to control some of the fungicide and the algae that grows and uh, hurts my seedlings. So that's all the stuff that you're gonna need and then a place to work in. Oh, by the way, you also need a sprayer to apply the Fizan. And this is a you know, $9 sprayer you could buy online or you can get it from Home Depot. And I'll put all the links for everything that you need in the description below. Now, the very first thing that you're gonna have to do is fill up all the pots with soil and pre-soak the soil in the 3% hydrogen peroxide. This process will take a little bit of time. And then one of the reasons why I use hydrogen peroxide in the first place is because it's going to help to sterilize the soil and it also aerates the soil. By doing that, you're gonna notice that the soil will bubble up and you can see me pushing it down repeatedly. Um, it's totally normal. I highly recommend wearing gloves, so, you know, what, whatever. It's not a macho thing. I don't wanna have my fingers burned by hydrogen peroxide. So highly recommend the gloves. Um, and then once you've got these filled up, We'll hop into the next step. We have a copia poa, gigantia, K, K. It's a collection number, so if you look that up, you can actually find uh, the locality da data for this particular. That's a plant with providence. Same with this, Turbinicarpus alonzo I. Okay, so basically from here, I'm gonna take the seeds. I wanna make sure that the top of the soil, I'm gonna just re-wet it. I wanna make sure that the top of soil is nice and moist. I'm gonna go ahead and place in my plant label. And uh, here I go for getting to put my gloves on again. I'm putting the gloves on for two different reasons. I, I Like I said, I really don't wanna get my skin burned. It's annoying to get the uh, hydrogen peroxide on them, but especially I do not wanna get the fungicide on my skin. And you can see here, that's what all the seeds look like. That's how small they are. So that's like a, it's like a little baby plant that just hasn't been born yet. And then I take them on. I mean, you can get, I'm not uh, as meticulous as some. I just sprinkle them on. I'm getting a lot of these seeds, like I said, off my own plant. So I'm feeling kind of a, uh, you know, they produce a lot of seeds. If you're buying seeds from a seed seller, they're gonna cost a bit more. So you might wanna be a little more meticulous. Okay, I'm gonna spray that on there. Okay, that one is ready to go. I'm gonna hit it again with hydrogen peroxide just to make sure it's nice and moist. And listen, I mean, it's really, it's this easy. You can go spend a mortgage payment on an Areocarpus or a Copiapoa, or you can have some patience and grow them yourself. 
and it's exciting honestly you learn a hell of a lot more about the plant when you grow them from scratch you get to figure out how they grow you get to watch them transition from being frankly little tropical little tropical plants that need tons of uh i'm gonna move this over here just to not get it sprayed anywhere near me The reason why I put that turfus on there, and that's what this is here, it's just turfus. So the turfus is essentially giving the, the seedlings something to grip onto so that they can grow out of. They need something to be able to root onto aside from the soil because they're sitting on top of the soil. I do not push the seeds down at all. So I just sit them on top of the soil and then I put the turfus as kind of a, a top dressing over it. And that's all they need. And the reason I'm using the Fizan is I had a lot of issues last year with fungus and algaes and molds and things like that. So I want to be extra, extra careful this year, baby. And the final step is I'm going to give these things an extra spray or two, stick them in the bag. That bag is where they're going to stay for the next year at least. Uh, will I need to water them again? Possibly. The reason why I switched from the lava to the soil mix is because the lava did not hold enough moisture. So I'm really hoping that with this batch of seedlings, I won't have the same issues. But once we've got these all sprayed up, then they're going to go under the grow lights and onto the heat mat. Right now my lights are off, but take them and put them under the lights and on the heat mat. That's it. That's it. That's all, baby. It's that simple and you can you too can grow cactus so here are a few of the plants and you can kind of get some of that humidity off the bag here are some of the ones that i did and this was sown uh today's the 20th these were sown on the fourth and this is hamato cactus seedlings here you can see how many of them that, that's successful germination and this is using the exact same process that i just did so it's obviously working and this is a cool one. This is Bursera microphylla, microphylla. And uh, these are a kind of a succulent tree, beautiful deciduous bark that grows down in Baja, California. We've got Agave utahensis, uh, Ebor spina. And this is a beautiful, you guys have seen some of the videos where I've shown these in habitat. I'm um, going camping there this weekend, actually pretty excited about it. And then here are some of the other, oh, this is Turbany carpus valdesianus. And so if you can see those little tiny guys in there, there are tons and tons of them. I mean, they're so, so small. And if you can imagine like seeing these actually growing out in the desert, I mean, it's incredible. And they grow just like that through cracks in the rocks and they're protected by the elements. They're getting the supreme treatment in here. So they've got all the humidity, all the nutrients, everything that they've needed has been provided for them. And that's kind of the goal. Um, I'll do another updated video later on down the line showing you how to harden them off and how to get them out of the bags and take them to the next step. But this is how you should uh, uh, be looking within about a week or two, honestly. So the Thilo cactus seeds came off of this plant right here. Um, the Turbany carpus waranegi seeds came off of these guys here. Uh, and then this is what, this is Turbany carpus alonzoi. So I'm growing these. Hopefully those will come out pretty good. And then what else am I growing in there? What was the other thing? Da, 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 da. Some astro hybrids. So the cool thing about hybridizing astro phytums is you like really never know what you're gonna end up with. So here's a couple. So this is an Anzuka. This is a Nudum. It's got some other kind of mix. You can see these little trichomes along the edge. This is an Asterius hybrid, and you can see that this thing is starting to spiral, which is just an unusual form. Doesn't mean it's a different species or anything like that, but it is a, a particularly cool looking plant. And that's all, these are all hybrids. And then you have other stuff that happens like this. I mean, take a look at that. This is probably like an F2 or F3 hybrid, which means it's been hybridized. And then the offspring of the hybrids were hybridized because you can see just based off of the kind of the shagginess of the trichomes, which are these little white flecks. This has got Coahuilense in it. So that's Astrophytum Coahuilense. Um, it's got some Kiko in it. It's got Asterius in it. And if I'm not mistaken, you can see little tiny spines coming out. So it's probably got some Capricorn or Ornatum in it as well. So I really don't know. I took some of those seeds off of uh, various different Astrophytum hybrids that I've got. 
So it'll be exciting to see what they end up looking like here in about a year or two. Fuck yeah, baby. I just love being in here. Look at this place. Look at us. Oh, this is, so this is Areocarpus retusis Las Tablas. So Las Tablas is a particular site in Mexico in San Luis Potosí, and that's where these grow. And as a matter of fact, one of the other plants that I've just so we're gonna be sowing seeds of today grows down there, and it is this guy right here. Turbany Carpus Lophophoroides. And now it's called Lophophoroides because it looks morphologically, I guess is what they said, it looks like a Lophophora. Um, I asked somebody why some of these other Turbany Carpus that really frankly look a lot more like a Lophophora weren't called that first, and that's this was just named first. Um, because as you can see, there's other plants in the genus that look a hell of a lot more like a Lophophora or Lophophora. I, I, I vacillate back and forth between the two pronunciations, baby. So I get a lot of questions about the type of light that I use, and this right here is a T5 grow lamp, and it's a six lamp. So what I've ended up doing primarily is only using four of the lamps, but what I realized is that if I built a different table and I centered this and kept it higher, I could use all six lamps and double my grow space. So if you have a lot of room, this is something good. If you have some smaller space, I would just recommend going for something smaller. But as far as the T5s, I have had no complaints with them. Hit that like button and subscribe. That's the end of the video, baby.